Well, when your girlfriend's car has got a check engine light, you fix it. So today's brought to, today's project is brought to you by the letter beer. Because it's what's for breakfast. So what better way to work on a car than when you've been drinking? I'll see what the check engine light is. First thing you, you gotta do is you gotta you gotta stick that thing in there. Find the hole. Alright, and you can put that down and pretend like you know what that deal does because it does something to the I don't know what it does. Now I gotta crawl in to the car. And when the owner of the car is like four foot tall, you gotta really uh, oh man. Get in there. Uh, I brought my beer. Yeah, Buick. That's a Buick uh on Clobinator or in in cal in calinator. So I don't know what the hell it is. It seems to be some form of Buick car that um we're working on. So hold the brake down. Or maybe, I don't know, hold this. Press brake to start. If you just hold the button down, it's key on engine off and it says the hood's open. So now we're gonna figure out where the hell the power button is on this thing. There it is. Turn that thing on until it whirls magic. Max assist, smart diag diagonist. Time for a drink. So at this point, you sit and wait and you contemplate life choices and why you became a mechanic in the first place. So you could drive around cool trucks and get all the chicks. Oh, now we're... For some reason, there's a lock screen on it because you don't want... I don't know why there's a lock screen. It's just the dumbest thing ever. Diagnosis. We're going to go over here to wherever the hell... U.S. There is no Buick. So I guess it's a GM. I'm going to press that one. Press OK. It's going to do some magic stuff and read something and... Go to automatic because I can't read anyway. And we'll hit read. And it's going to read the VIN. And there's there's the VIN. And we hit OK. <coughs> Decoding failed. I don't know. Who cares? All right. So we're going to have to do a manual one, apparently. Hit read again. OK. Yay! This is a... Uh, I don't know. Let's just guess. Passenger car, maybe? Buick? It is none of those. So let's try this one, Buick. There we go. And Clavinator. Loading the system. Blooga, 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 blooga. Come on, get it. Every time you see a loading screen, it's time for beer. I'm going to need another beer. So... Uh, I think I need another scan tool, or I'd like to have another one, because I watched another guy called something Check Engine Bob or Check Engine Chuck or something like that, and his scan tool is really fast. Uh, yeah. It's got those. I'm pretty sure it's got those. Hey, <laughs> you guys want to see something funny? So, like I said, it's my girlfriend's car, and I get in here, I actually borrowed a car to go pick up the kids. And I went down to options. And I turned the speed warning on to 46 miles an hour. <laughs> and she wasn't happy about it. <laughs> Uh-oh, here she comes. Shh. Pretend like I'm not recording. I fixed it. You fixed it. Thank well, you. I fixed the speed limit warning. <laughs> Probably gonna do it again. <laughs> That's going on YouTube. My hair all in my face. I haven't actually put you on a film yet. Let's auto scan. Why not? $3,500 scans, little baby. Fancy, see? It's even wireless. That thing down there blinks a whole bunch and you plug it in. I don't really know what it does, but it seems to communicate with this thing. It runs through all this stuff and then. Hell, I don't know what any of this stuff does anyway. I just hit the buttons until it says okay. Is it the same thing that like AutoZone uses when they come and plug, the, plug it in? It's much more fancy than what I have though. 
AutoZone monkeys have a little glorified scan uh, code reader. So AutoZone's not as bougie as Stephen Cox. Right. And all they do is take that code and go in and punch into the little computer and they top <laughs> out a thing that gives you every single conceivable problem that it could possibly be. And then you get it and you're like, oh my gosh, this is going to be so expensive. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, we should sell you all these parts. So, all right. So, we got the engine control module. We go over here. I said we go over here. Trouble codes. So, evaporate. Ev 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 there's a fancy word here. Emissions. System flow during non-purge. What does that mean? That means the purge valve is allowing flow through it or something. It's not supposed to. So, how do you check it? Your fuel tank's got vapor in it, right? So the vapor in the fuel tank's got to go somewhere. We can't just vent that stuff to atmosphere anymore because EPA says it's going to kill sunflowers or something. So you have to do something with it. So you run your tank vent all the way up into your intake, and you just vent it right into the intake. But you can't just run a line straight to the intake because then you're running on fuel fumes, and then, um, and then it's a problem. So you have to have a valve in between the two. So the purge valve is on top of the engine. Purge valve gets stuck, got a problem. You also know you got a purge valve problem whenever you go to, yeah, shut that door. You also know you got a purge valve problem because when you go to fuel up the car, for some reason, all of a sudden, it just has this really, really long crank. And it takes forever to crank. Sometimes you have to do it too, especially these cars that have the little start where it just takes the control away. All you're doing is sending a signal to the computer, which is ridiculous, unlike truck, to where I can hotwire the damn ignition switch and just, yeah, whether that engine wants to start or not, it's gonna crank. We'll go live data, because we don't want dead data, we want live data, right? Evaporative emissions, and all that does, that just gives us our evaporative emissions stuff. Purge valve solenoid command is 21%, right? What we're gonna look at is tank pressure. Now, do you see how that's negative? We shouldn't be pulling a vacuum on our fuel tank. Sure, purge valve shouldn't be open. So, tell me the purge valve is bad. We're just going to leave this thing here, teach it a lesson. We're going to hit stop because you don't work on things while the engine's running sometimes. You now, most of that, sometimes I do, but you get your hand caught in the fan a lot, and that's a problem. So, you take a drink of your favorite favorite brewery, right there, Martin House Sons here in Fort Worth. And then we go shotgun apart. Take that thing off, apparently. And we just, yeah, yeah. there you go, just rip it off. Oh, I guess we gotta take that dude off. Good old GM, they got a special safety screw, but if you jam a screwdriver into it hard enough, you can take it out. Stupid safety screw. Then this whole thing, man, just throw it on the ground. Now you figure out where the hell the freaking purge valve is supposed to be. And now, because GM's not capable of designing anything at all, cleverly, a valve's way back there, you gotta pull all this stuff off. <clears throat> Why make it simple when you can make it as complicated as possible? Goodness. There's that thing. You need to disconnect that dude and disconnect that one. <sighs> Push this guy up really hard. <sighs> And throw that away. You don't need it. <clears throat> pull your pull your clip out. Push it. Yay! Ooh. See? Move. And you use your cordless. Ah. Theoretically, it should come off. Twisty. <clears throat> and there you go. It's a Bosch. To get you an AC Delco. Old part. New part. Notice how it says Bosch. Bosch, AC Delco. 
Put some lube on the low ring right there. If you ain't got any, pull your dipstick out. Just use some engine oil. It'll help slide it in the hole a lot better. Yeah, you know, it goes in there. Now making sure you torque it down properly because it needs to like about 215 foot pounds. And you take this little guy. This is the male end and you need to find its female end to go. Ah. Like that. Take your hose. Route it right. Stick it on there. And the cool thing about these, when you pull them off, you gotta push a little tab down, right? See how that works? When you put them on, you just stick them on there, like that. Then we put our most ridiculous intake tube set up that you could ever imagine back on. Make sure that you got your connection back on, plug your mass airflow sensor back in, and don't forget to tighten that guy. If you don't tighten that guy, you run into all sorts of problems. You basically cause world hunger and war in Ukraine and Fox News will probably talk about it because they got nothing else to talk about. And voila, it's all back together. Make sure you put this all back on because heaven forbid anybody actually be able to see the engine because if you see the engine, then you're going to think this is a lesser car than one that you can't see the engine because VVT, which no one has any idea what that means which is a perfect stopping point for today's sponsor, which is the letter seven. Ah, seven. Now that you're six or seven beers into it, about 12 hours later, start it up. That way we can get the air conditioning on, because it's hot. And, Access trouble codes. Yeah, that's still there. Oh, actually, let's go back. And we'll clear the uh, DTCs. Yes, the engine's supposed to be off, but who cares? We ain't got time for that. All right. No codes. Wait a minute. No codes. No fault codes detected. We'll go back to, back to the live data. And we'll look at the whatever that word is emissions epa nonsense jargon time for beer each evap purge solenoid valve commands zero which is better fuel tank pressure hey look we're not running vacuum anymore on our fuel tank which means we're not sucking fumes so that means it fixed it those of you curious, shotgun and apart means just uh, blindly following YouTube videos and looking it up and saying it's probably the, the part. Now the EVAP, sil e the EVAP purge solenoid that I just put on this car was bought and purchased and provided off of Amazon. I went with AC Delco. I actually went to Rock Auto. Rock Auto was going to take like four days to get it to me and I was like, nah, I can't wait that long. So we went over to Amazon and we ordered off Amazon. It was like $15, but I actually told my girlfriend it was $300, so she owes me $300 bucks plus labor. So actually, I told her the whole job is going to be about $450, $500, and now she owes me, so. <laughs> anyway, hope you liked the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you guys want to send beer or whiskey my way, uh, uh, throw me an email, and uh, I will gladly accept uh, any payment and form and trade of uh, any sort of uh, bottled um, bottled spirits for future videos so hope you like this video hit the like button hit the subscribe button and get out and drink it